Back here on the Now Morning Show, and uh, you know, it's all about the coronavirus, COVID-19, and we thought this morning we look at the psychological impact that this virus is having on our citizens here in Trinidad and Tobago. Of course, the entire world is affected by it, but more specifically at home. And we've invited Dr. Diane Douglas, who is Doctor of Clinical Psychology at Douglas and Associates. Good morning, Doc. Good morning, Lisa. And thank mm. you so much for coming out this morning. My pleasure. You know, mm. we've been seeing extreme behavior, not just mm. in Trinidad and Tobago, mm. around the world, you know, mm. panic buying. And I think there's a lot of fear as well, mm -hmm. fear mongering. Um, what's happening in, mm. in a situation of pandemic and mm -hmm. pandemonia, maybe? <laughs> well, I think, first of all, we have to acknowledge that the fear that people feel mm -hmm. is normal. Mm -hmm. There is so much about the pandemic that seems to be unknown. And what is known, especially through social media, seems to be very inflated. Mm -hmm. And people are uncertain as to what's true and what's not true. Yes. So I think there is, at least for me, that it is understandable that there will be concern, anxiety, fear, the panic buying, etc. cetera. Yeah. Yes. Now, let me ask you something. Mm -hmm. The H1N1, which was in 2009, mm -hmm. you saw about 60 million people affected. Mm -hmm. But is it because there wasn't that uh, increased sense of information through social media why you we know, didn't have the same reaction or this similar is reaction? What, this is what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. Because now with social media, it is very difficult for people to understand or to discern what is the famous fake news right. and what is not. Right. And sometimes it is so nicely packaged that it is really difficult for people mm -hmm. to know. Mm -hmm. So I think that fuels the concern that yes. people have. Do you think yes. persons should stop reading everything? You know, <laughs> like put a, put a filter. Yes. Would that help? or is I it think setting boundaries. Right will really be important and setting boundaries with ourselves. Mm -hmm. So if we know that there is a certain medium that causes us concern, then it is better to leave it well alone. Yes. And you hear the government saying over and over again, which sources are the credible sources and which sources are not. But the struggle, of course, is do people believe what is said in the public arena right. by those in authority. Right. And that's the other concern as well. Mm -hmm. So the same way they're concerned about fake news, mm -hmm. then they also the issue is that those in leadership must also have credibility as well mm -hmm. for persons to be able to listen to them mm -hmm. and to be able to see what they are saying as truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, on that point, though, mm -hmm. some, there's the school of thought that says that if there are persons, however, because you're talking about the various numbers that have been circulating yes. and people say, right. Yes. But there are persons and who, videos. And huh? videos, yes. yes. But there are persons who are saying that if I know I have COVID-19 mm -hmm. I, and, and I know that it's not being reported, why wouldn't I take to social media and say that, mm -hmm. you see? Mm -hmm. So again, there, there are filters that you can use to discern. Well, you see, the thing is that this is not a time for mm -hmm. speculation mm -hmm. at all. Exactly. You see? So what people say and what others don't say is really not the time for this. Yes. So it is really better that we limit the sources Agreed. that we focus on. Mm -hmm. As one person said recently, if you feel the need to send it forward, hold back. It isn't necessary mm -hmm. that you be the one to be sending out information that might be erroneous or suspect. So stop yourself. That's mm -hmm. a boundary you can put on yourself as well. Mm -hmm. To stop yourself from feeling that you have to send that information forward. Good advice yes. there. <laughs> so we saw on the traffic mm -hmm. uh, update, mm -hmm. Claire Roads, yes. which is not <laughs> usual for this time, but of course, yes. with persons having to either self-quarantine or stay at home with the children, or mm -hmm. because they're just at home because school, you know, they're teachers and so on. Mm -hmm. um, Self-quarantine, let's talk yes, about that now, yes. and uh, the space in which you have to self-quarantine. If it is not a safe space, yes. how do people deal with that situation now? And you see, that is one of the concerns that we as psychologists have.
because there is the assumption right away that if you send people home, that home is a safe space to be. Mm -hmm. And so for some, um, home is not a sanctuary. And therefore, home is a place where you rest your head for a little bit and then you're out, you go out, and sanctuary is outside the home. And so it's really important for us to attend to that this morning. For example, we have parents now um, who did not know this was going to happen. You now have their children mm -hmm. having to be at home with them, mm -hmm. and they are also working. You now have a situation where employers are asked to be compassionate but the said employers are also human beings as well. Yeah. And the employers as well are also affected by the pandemic. And then you also have the situation where you hear, okay, see if you can get a support system in place for care for the children. But guess what? Some of the very support systems are in the category of high risk to get the virus because a lot of the caretakers are older. Mm -hmm. We have the grandparents, etc., mm -hmm. mm -hmm. but not just the caretakers, Lisa. Mm -hmm. A lot of the world leaders are in the category of you know, high risk think, because they're that. older. I you know what I mean? About that you know? Yes. No, don't, don't yeah. ask me my age <laughs> in the process of this. Eh? So the thing is that you have these categories mm -hmm. um, where these are the very persons who might be at high risk. So. We need to be attend to that. And mm -hmm. so one of the things we will say is this. If you shout louder and tell people, be calm, be calm, that's not going to help. Mm -hmm. So being insistent that people are calm does not help. Mm -hmm. What people need is a dialogue about their fears mm -hmm. and their concerns, mm -hmm. yes? Which is what we're doing now. Which is what we are doing yeah. now, which is mm -hmm. wonderful. Mm -hmm. With that dialogue that you have about fears and concerns, what people want also are certain assurances. And the number one assurance that people want, which cannot be given, is you won't get it. Yeah. <laughs> That's what people want. Yeah. You, you know, they want some statement that says that you won't get it. But what the statement needs to be now is to call us into maturity, to call us into maturity as adults, mm -hmm. you know? And so what does maturity look like? What maturity looks like is this. If you are a parent and you are the one in charge of your household, you call a family meeting. Very much as Trinbegonians, we like to leave things to chance, our carnival mentality. You know, we kind of let go yeah. and whatever happens, happens. This is not the time for that. So we need to be, be mature. And our children need to derive confidence from us as the adults. So use the model of the school. There's a reason why schools are not places of chaos, because there is a structure, there is predictability, mm -hmm. um, people know what they are supposed to do. So use that system. So you call your nice family meeting and you say, okay, household, we are going to be together in a confined space called home for a little bit of time. And school is out, so therefore this is what we are going to do. Put up a nice little schedule and you could get them to create it. Right. All right? Right. So you get that buy-in from everyone. Let them understand what we are going to do and let them create a little chart. Also, a little reward system. Those who follow the chart well will get the smiley faces. Mm -hmm. And if you get X number of smiley faces. Now, this is for you the see? children this only or everybody in the house. <laughs> <laughs> the adults too. You know? Well, the mature adults will have another system of reward. <laughs> right. Which brings me to the fact that the other thing that we need to look at is a possible explosion in the population. Right. Because if people are left at home, mommy and yes. daddy. Yes. Right? Okay. Yes. Moving right December along. Babies. Yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> yes, we don't know what will happen there. Yeah. So you want to be able to do that. So you put up a little chart with a nice structure, what time, maybe a little family exercise, you're going to maybe mm -hmm. have a time chores that we're going to do. Mm -hmm. And then you have when you do school work. Now what is wonderful is that a number of sources have websites where you can engage 
to be able to keep up with schoolwork. Right. So have a time for schoolwork, right? right? Mm -hmm. And then this is a wonderful time to teach some of the very virtues that mm -hmm. sometimes you don't get a chance to talk about, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. And then you have a time for ending. Now, here's something that I think parents need to pay attention to. You see that thing called the internet, yeah. um, social media, etc. You want to monitor your children's devices. Yeah. Because the same way that you as an adult can get concerned by fake news, if it's coming through a filter, no, sorry, with no, no filter, filter for yes. your children, mm -hmm. then we have a problem. Mm -hmm. We also have to remember, too, that COVID-19 is not the only serious thing that's happening. Mm -hmm. We have all sorts of sick information coming through. You know, high rates of pornography and different things like that, that you would also want to monitor mm -hmm. what your children look at. Mm -hmm. So this is a time, instead of the devices, except for schoolwork, which you still want to monitor, yes. have table games. Mm -hmm. This is a time to talk about fairness, mm -hmm. how not to cheat with a table game, how to follow rules, different yeah. things like yeah. that. So bring out the table games that catch in dust in the cupboard <laughs> and be able to use it so that you are able to help calm the children. The other thing that I think is important is what I see happening in faith communities. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing about us as Trinbegonians, we believe in God. And I think this is an important strength that we have. This is a time now to reestablish what we call those family altars. Mm -hmm. Because if we look historically, this is not the first time the world has had to deal with disease. Absolutely it's not. It's not the first time. We had the Spanish flu, 1918, yeah. and coming all the way down. All the way yeah. down. Mm -hmm. And so we can see that we survive those things. Yeah. And so it is important now to draw on that strength, draw on the strength of our faith, draw on the strength of what we did historically and use that to be able to find balance. Mm -hmm. Because you see, in a lot of our faith books, what we call holy books, there are careful mm -hmm. steps yes. as to how to deal with fear and anxiety. Yes. And I think those are important for us. And a lot of the religious bodies have put things also on the net to help us to be, you know, increase our faith as well. Well, Dr. Douglas, mm -hmm. just talking to you, you have calmed certainly <laughs> this whole, I'm seeing some of the guests going, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. I think we need to have you back on again, maybe once it, a week. It yes? would be my pleasure. Yeah, so that we have pleasure. a session with mm -hmm. you to, um, you know, to help mm -hmm. people navigate yes. this uh, mm -hmm. unfamiliar landscape mm -hmm. that we're going through now, not just in Trinidad and Tobago, but mm -hmm. around the world. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you so much. I can't hug or shake your hands. Yes, but I quite but understand, <laughs> and neither will I be hugging or shaking yours. <laughs> But you know, yes. thank you so much, and we'll talk about maybe making it a regular segment. All, All right. right, my pleasure. All right. Dr. So Diane much. Douglas, there, mm -hmm. Doctor of mm -hmm. Clinical Psychology, and that's going to be the theme today because we have a number of other uh, persons coming in to help us understand how to just you know navigate these uh, times that we're going through here in Trinidad and Tobago. Let's take in a few messages. Come right back here on the Now Morning Show. <laughs> 